All right, so we're looking at the new DP55KG motherboard from Intel. Definitely extreme series. Definitely uh, improved its overclocking abilities compared to the last extreme boards, which were the uh, X48s. Quite, quite impressive. And also the uh, DX58 SO smack overboard. Uh, this is a really nice motherboard for the P55 chipset. Uh, now, if you don't know that much about P55, it is a little bit different from X58. Uh, it does support the Core i5 and Core i7 processors, but it is a new socket, and the architecture is completely different. Um, it gets rid of the QPI, um, and it's completely different. Basically, the P55 chipset becomes uh, a PCH, which is a platform control hub, and then the PCI uh, lanes go directly into the CPU. Everything else goes into the CPU with a, a DMI, or direct media interface, uh, and basically we're getting rid of uh, pretty much all the other chips on the board, no more South Bridge. Uh, it's basically a two-chip board. Uh, you have your uh, processor and the P55 chipset, and that is it. Um, so they definitely are saving power and being a little more efficient by doing that design. If you want to know more about that, uh, you can search uh, Anna Chung, P55, Computer TV, and YouTube. It'll come up. Uh, we had a little interview with her. Uh, she explained it all. But this is Intel's new Extreme Series boards now. Uh, they have two Extreme Series boards. This is the full-size one. They have the exact same thing in Micro ATX. If you want to go uh, with a smaller board, you can. But this is the full-size board. And as you can see, uh, it looks a little bit similar to the... Uh, to the uh, smack overboard, but it's not. Uh, it has quite a few differences, and the first thing you'll obviously notice is that there is no more north bridge uh, on this motherboard. Where the north bridge used to be, there is now a postcode uh, and your uh, CMOS battery. Uh, so that's basically a, a huge difference. Also, you'll notice that uh, because everything runs a little bit cooler on here, uh, they have very small passively cooled uh, for your VRMs and for your MOSFETs. Uh, it doesn't produce that much heat. Uh, they actually have a new technology that they've been uh, using that actually monitors the temperature of your uh, of your uh, VRMs and basically will make sure the power is getting distributed to them evenly. A lot of times you'll have like 12 phase power, but two of the phases will be burning hot and the rest will be cold. Well, now you're going to get something that's going to make uh, all of these run nice and cool or at the same temperature at least. So the power is being more evenly distributed. It's going to give you cleaner power uh, to your CPU, give you a better overclock, give you better efficiency. Uh, it also has uh, all sorts of solid state. Everything on here is solid state as far as the capacitors go. Uh, really good hardware, really nice board. Uh, they also kind of got rid of the, uh, the bigger heat sinks for shipping. Uh, in case, you know, a lot of times motherboards, if they get uh, banged around in shipping, they'll, the, the heat sinks will actually come off. Now, uh, as you guys know, this does support the socket 1156 uh, CPU socket. Uh, so it's going to be your Core i5s, your Core i7s, which are going to be your 750 Core i5 and your 860 Core i7. Uh, now, in the future, you know, right now that's all we have, but there will be other 800 and 700 series i5 and i7 Linfield chips from Intel uh, that this motherboard will support. So your options are not only limited to two, uh, you also have two. Uh, two-channel memory, so you have uh, four DIMMs in total. It's not triple channel anymore, but uh, I don't know if you knew, but triple channel doesn't really make the biggest difference. It does make a little difference, but not that big. Uh, you can still support dual channel DDR3 up to 16 gigabyte with four gigabyte DIMMs. Uh, you can actually run uh, up to 1600 megahertz memory if you're using a memory with an XMP, uh, extreme memory profile uh, setting, uh, or if not, you can do up to 1333 and 1066 uh, standard using the JDEC standards, uh, or you can overclock way beyond 1600 if you know what you're doing and you know how to mess with uh, voltages and timings and latencies and all that good stuff. The board also features six SATA ports in total. Uh, so basically, again, there is no ICH uh, Southbridge chipset all, like there was on X58. Basically, it goes directly to P55 and then in turn goes directly to CPU. Uh, but you still have all the same RAID functionality. You can do RAID 0, 1, uh, 5, and 10. No problems. You can do uh, quite a few arrays on here. And of course, these are SATA 2. Uh, now, let's keep, uh, keep it going. Let's talk a little bit about uh, slots as far as expansion slots go now. Again, this is an extreme board, so again, it is for gaming, it is for overclocking. Uh, but P55 only gives you 16 lanes of PCI Express in total. So that means you can only get 16 in total, but uh, they did a good job because, of course, it is PCI Express 2.0. Uh, you do have one PCI Express X16 right up here at the top. Uh, now, in turn, this board does support Crossfire and SLI. It's very nice to have both uh, on board, just like on X58, so you can uh, actually run uh, two cards on here. Now, X16 is going to run if you have a, a single card. If you populate both slots, including this X8 PCI Express, it's going to bifurcate down that uh, X16 to X8 and X8, which means that you'll still run at full speed, 
because it's PCI Express 2.0, uh, you're still going to get the same amount of bandwidth, uh, and you can run SLI uh, and or Crossfire. Now, on top of this type of connectivity, you also have a PCI Express uh, X4 uh, down here. Now, that's going to be good for peripheral cards or anything that runs off PCI Express uh, will fit there. Uh, you also have two standard PCI slots that are right here, as well as two standard PCI Express X1 slots uh, that are up here. These are good for uh, sound cards and fiber cards work on there too. Lots and lots of uh, connectivity. So in total, uh, you have four, five, six, seven slots. That's that's a lot of slots. Another thing that's pretty neat to this board that you probably won't see on any other board. Actually, I, I have not ever seen it. That is a Bluetooth module right there. So you do have integrated Bluetooth into the motherboard. Uh, why they did that, I do not know, but it is of course useful and it is a, not a bad thing by any means. It's the more you get, the better. So uh, it's one less thing you have to buy for your desktop. You do have integrated Bluetooth again. Uh, you can hook up your, your phones, your cameras. There's a bunch of new stuff. Uh, there's a bunch of new Samsung cameras that connect via Bluetooth to download the photos off of them. Sync your phone. You can tether off of this if you have an iPhone that's jailbroken. Uh, so lots of really good stuff you can do with that. Now, when you go to the back panel, uh, there's a ton of impressive stuff. First of all, take a look at this back panel. It's absolutely ridiculous. Tons of USB ports. Uh, there's even more USB ports uh, internally and on headers. Uh, so let's start off uh, start from over here. Uh, this is 7.1 channel HD audio, but what's really, really cool about it, it's the uh, ALC889A uh, chipset from Realtek. It's actually 10 channel audio. So you have 7.1 uh, in analog, but you can also do dual media streaming through your SP diffs. There's two SP diffs if you notice that. Uh, so that's very, very cool. So 10 channels in total. Uh, over here, you have your 10 100 1000 Ethernet uh, and your Firewire. And below those, you have four USB 2.0 ports. You have an additional four over here, bringing the grand total to eight. Two optical SP diffs. And this right here, what do you think this is, producer Dan? Reset. Reset what? Yeah, it's close, but it's not. It's not a clear CMOS button. It's a back to BIOS button. It's completely different and it's super awesome. Check it out. You uh, basically usually press your clear CMOS, resets all your settings. You go back. Oh my gosh, I just lost my overclock. Unless you had multiple profiles set up or you're writing everything down or stuff like that, it's just a big headache. This is great. Rather than reset your CMOS, it just gets you back into the BIOS with the same settings. You just lower the setting. You were right where you left off. Uh, you just find your stability. Very, very nice feature. Love it. Uh, you also have dual eSATAs, which is not something that you see uh, very often. A dual eSATA is going to be very useful for external hard drives. Uh, and uh, it's just a nice, nice thing for them to put on the board in general. You also have, right up here at the top, an internal USB 2.0. Uh, so this is kind of odd. You find headers, but not an actual internal port. Uh, I'm guessing that their, their function for that is to put a, a flash drive in there, and basically you can have uh, Ready Boost for Windows 7 or for Windows Vista. Uh, internally, you don't have to have a flash drive hanging off the back, which looks kind of dumb. Uh, you just leave it inside. Nobody will ever notice it's there, and you'll get increased performance, which is all very cool. Uh, while we're here, 8-pin uh, connector is very, very uh, convenient, and also right down here, LCD poster. That's a, a nice little overclocking feature, which there are quite a few of. And you know what? Let's talk about some of these overclocking features. Uh, right over here in the top, I'm going to show you uh, there is a power button. Up here, up here. There you go. Found it. That is a power button to turn on uh, your PC. Again, there is a back to BIOS button. There is no reset button, uh, but you might not need it because there's a lot of new stuff on here as far as overclocking now. Uh, this board comes in the box uh, with something called the Intel Desktop Control Center, the IDCC. Basically, uh, what the IDCC does uh, is that it's actually a operating system based overclocking utility. Uh, so as you can imagine, uh, it's just like the one for the uh, Smack Over board and for the X48 Extreme boards. Basically lets you control frequencies and voltages uh, from the OS so you don't have to reboot and restart and go into the BIOS and go through all that trouble. Lets you get at least that base first part of the overclock, the first like 90%, which is the easiest, out of the way really quickly. It's the easiest, but it's also the most time consuming. You know, you just get that all out of the way and then the fine tuning you do later on. Uh, it also brings a new feature to the market though, which is auto tuning. Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's new because it, it existed before, but now it actually works, which is fantastic. Uh, basically what it does, overclocks your system until it goes a little too high and you crash and it'll automatically just tune itself. It just figures it out and it'll give you a pretty decently high overclock, uh, especially on the Core i7-860s, just by hitting the auto-tune button, which is extremely impressive uh, and extremely cool uh, you know, feature to have. Now, let's talk a little bit about more of those USB 2.0 headers that I mentioned because I did not talk about them. Uh, look at this ridiculous amount of USB 2.0 headers. Not only does it have the eight on the back, but you have an additional two 
uh, right here that gives you a grand total of 12 USB 2.0 ports. You also have an additional uh, Firewire header, uh, which is really, really cool. And, and then finally, uh, the grand finale to the whole thing is right down here in the bottom corner, your, uh, your light up Intel Extreme Skull which is nasty, and it's actually pretty cool because it's got a bunch of LEDs on it. Uh, you can actually see them uh, from the back. There you go. So you got a bunch of LEDs, and basically you can, from inside the Intel Desktop Control Center, you can actually uh, make them so they go with, uh, they can go in sync with your hard drive activity. You can make them pulse on and off. You can change the colors. You can do pretty much just anything, uh, but basically you have control of uh, when and how those light up. You can turn it all off together. So very, very nice board. Uh, they've definitely come a big step. Intel was kind of always with their extreme boards, like, oh, they're kind of extreme, but they're not. This is pretty extreme. How, lots of great settings. If you're not really uh, into super overclocking, like you want to get to like 4.3, 4.4 on i7 on water, uh, this board could do it, but it might not be the best suited for it. But if you're a gamer, you don't want to spend a ton of money. You want to get something that's got every feature on the planet, has an integrated Bluetooth module. I mean, come on, really? Uh, you know, tons of PCI Express connectivity, uh, X1, X4, X8, and X16 lets you do SLI and Crossfire. Auto, auto overclocking, back to BIOS button is extremely convenient. The Intel Desktop Control Center is great. So if you want that type of board, I mean, this is right up your alley, especially for the price that it costs. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, and I really like it. And we were actually going to use this one uh, here for a, an editing station. So it's good stuff. If you have uh, any questions on it, feel free to uh, email me, and I'll see you guys next time. For more information on the Intel DP55KG Extreme Series motherboard, go to com.puter.tv and type in DP55KG into the search box. For Computer TV, I'm Albert.